So the nurses came in and checked me and I was telling my husband how I felt like I had fluid coming down my back. So he checked and said I didn't that he didn't go. They ended up just giving me, I guess, ibuprofen, whatever I could have while I was breastfeeding. They gave me that and sent me home. Within two days, we were home. So at this point, our family is getting ready to come up. It's been about five days when Aaron's parents, or Thursday, that Thursday. And so it had been almost a week, and I was still having um, the migraine and neck ache and my father-in-law was like you need to go to the doctor and have it checked out so I called and made an appointment for the next day and that day my parents were driving up I think my appointment was at two o'clock I woke up the morning of my appointment looked in the mirror started brushing my teeth and I could tell that my tongue was numb and I don't know what made me smile but I smiled in the mirror and my whole right lip would wasn't moving this side went up and then this side didn't and that freaked me out I ran to my husband and I said what the heck is wrong with my lip so at this point I'm like we just need to get ready and go to my appointment went to my appointment I got my blood pressure checked and it was sky high sky high I never have bad blood or blood pressure yeah blood pressure the doctor was freaking out um, especially with my lip being like the way it was and it as the day or the appointment went on, my whole right side of my face was just going numb and wasn't moving at all. So it just kept getting worse. And I told him how I was having really bad migraines and a neck ache. So at this point, they're thinking I had a mini stroke. And I'm freaking out. The baby's in the car with our in-laws. They're waiting on me. I thought it was going to be like a quick in and out appointment. We were going to go to lunch after. Um, my in and out appointment. We were going to go to lunch after. Um, my husband ran out and told them that that wasn't the case. They actually were going to keep me and send me to the ER. So my husband rushed home, rushed them home, while I waited for the ambulance to come get me from, like, the little, um, it's a health clinic that we go to on base. So the ambulance came to get me. They took me to the hospital, ER. I ended up getting a CT scan. They found blood on my brain or fluid on my brain, which everyone was freaking out about. And I'm over here bawling, crying, thinking, oh my God, I'm going to have to have brain surgery or something. My baby's not with me. Like, it was just, I was a wreck. I'm like, my parents are coming in today. This is not how I wanted them to meet my child in the hospital. I wanted to be there and, like, have it to be a happy, like, sweet moment. And it wasn't that at all. So after that... I was in the ER for about four hours, I believe, and this is starting to be like six, seven o'clock at night, and um, they're telling me that I'm going to be transferred to UNC for to be seen at a neurologist because um, they didn't have a neurologist on base at the hospital, and that's who I needed to be seen by to just to check over everything and make sure everything was okay with the fluid on my brain, and obviously stuff going on with my face so instead of I guess they were really concerned about it they ended up night flying me to UNC so when they said that I was like oh my god this really must not be good at all I was a wreck 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 total wreck I've never cried so much in my life my baby's at home every like I had to fly by myself and UNC I think it's about two hours away from us all my family just got in town and I now they're all gonna have to drive to UNC in the middle of the night it ended up being just my mom my husband and he brought the baby um, but I was in ICU and the nurse was like your baby can't be in here unless you sign a waiver because there's a lot of sick people in here and my husband was almost at the hospital at this point and I was like no I'm not bringing her in here then even though I wanted her so bad, I was like, I cannot risk my five-day-old baby in the NICU or in ICU with all these sick people. And I was like, I have to be moved out of here. I cannot be in ICU for days without having my baby. Like, I literally will freak out. I was already freaking out. My mom was like, you are crying green tears. You need to stop. I was so depressed. It was just a wreck. 
So now I had to stay the night in ICU. My mom stayed with me and my husband ended up driving another two hours back home with the baby. And he took care of her and his parents were there and my dad was there. But you know, when you're a new mom, you don't want to leave your baby. So I guess the doctors realized how distraught and upset I was that my child couldn't be there. So they ended up moving me to like the mother ward where you go after you deliver at UNC so I, I could have Gemma with me and, um, and my husband. So they all, we ended up staying at UNC for four days. Throughout the, throughout the four days that I was there, they kept blood, the checking blood every morning, every night. I had another, um, M I had an MRI after that. And they said it was ended up being fluid and a little bit of blood, like right in the front of my brain. They still have no idea to this day why it happened, if it was the epidural, if it was from me pushing. So as you can tell, with this baby, I'm a little worried. They said it shouldn't affect this baby, but I have yet to go see, I'm going to see um, maternal fetal medicine at the end of this month to go over everything that happened to me because people on base still don't know what happened. So we have to do that and I'm thinking, everyone's thinking that they're gonna tell me to do C-section so I'm not pushing because that's where I think I went wrong. I pushed too much, first of all, pushed too hard. And I think the epidural, getting it twice and I'm pretty sure I had fluid leakage. So that's why they made me lay on my back for four days at UNC. I had to have nurses pump me because I was determined to breastfeed while I laid on my back or at some points in the middle of the night I would lay on my side and Gemma would feed that way. But it literally was insane. Never in my life would I think I would have to go through something like that. But it happens all the time, stuff randomly happens. I went back, I think a month later, to have a CT scan done to make sure the fluid was gone. Oh, I skipped a thing. I had to be put on steroids for a month um, to fix my face, which it's fixed, but I can still tell now that I'm making videos that part of my lip is like up when I'm talking, which is kind of weird, but. So since that big ordeal, um, hopefully this pregnancy, fingers crossed that nothing will happen and I will have a safe and healthy delivery, whether that be C-section or vaginal birth, I don't care. As long as I don't have to go through everything that happened afterwards, I would like to have a smooth transition coming home. But I think my next video, I'm going to do what I eat in a day for these just so people can have an idea of snacks and meals because I had a hard time trying to find snacks and meals that were healthy and on like the carb budget. So if you want to see more from me, please subscribe and I'd love to hear from you. So please comment. Thank you and have a good